File upload vulnerabilities occur when an application allows a user to upload a file, such as a picture or a document, to a server. If the application does not properly validate the file, an attacker may be able to upload a malicious file that could compromise the security of the server. This can allow the attacker to execute arbitrary code on the server, or to access sensitive information stored on the server. Hello everyone, welcome back again. In this video, we will deal with security issues related to file upload. There are several types of attacks that can be used to exploit file upload vulnerabilities. For example, an attacker may try to upload a file that contains malicious code, such as a PHP script or an executable file. The attacker could then access the file from the server and execute the code, potentially gaining access to sensitive data or taking control of the server. Another type of attack that can be used to exploit file upload vulnerabilities are called cross-site scripting. This type of attack involves injecting malicious code into a website, which is then executed by the victim's web browser. If a user is tricked into uploading a file that contains XSS code, the code could be executed on the server and potentially compromise the security of the system. Let's go straight to demonstrate file upload vulnerability using the DAM Vulnerable File Upload Lab web application. DAM Vulnerable File Upload Lab is designed to practice file upload vulnerabilities. Before getting started, our first priority is to set up this web application within our local machine. To set up the File Upload Lab web application, firstly, we have to clone it from GitHub. Open a new terminal and type git clone and paste the GitHub link. Change the directory to File Upload Lab and list files and directories. Here, we will have to copy the DVFU directory to the web directory. Now, we have to give all permission to the DVFU using the chmod command. Now, let me start the Apache 2 service using the sudo service apache2 start command. Once the Apache 2 service started, we can easily access the web application through any browser. If you have noticed, we are presented with various levels of an HTML form that is asking us to upload a file. Let's visit the level 1 section. In this section, there will be no security restrictions, so it means we can upload malicious files. Let's see if we can upload and run our own PHP script on the backend. Let's create a simple PHP file containing the following code, which displays the PHP information. The preceding code executes the PHP info function when executed by a PHP interpreter. We use this to check if the uploaded PHP file is successfully executed on the server side or not. We get a successful upload message and path information for the file as well. Let's try to access the file to see if PHP code execution is possible on the server. Look at that! Our PHP code ran on the server successfully. This payload was benign and only intended for testing. Now let's try to execute the PHP reverse shell script on the server. First, we'll need a PHP script that is capable of creating TCP connection based reverse shells. Open a new terminal and locate php reverse shell command. Copy this file to the Kali home directory. After this, we have to configure the reverse shell php file by providing a proper IP and port, so that it can connect with the netcat listener. Now, upload the reverse shell file. 
Before we initiate the reverse shell, we need to create our netcat listener. Let's create a listener on port 1234 by running the nc-lvnp and mentioning the listening port. As soon as we click on the link, our netcat gets a reverse shell from the server, and we can happily execute commands through this interactive command shell. Let's move on to the second level section. In this section, there will be some sort of protection mechanisms to prevent PHP file uploads, which means we can't upload .php file extension. But, we can try to do this with other .php extensions. Let me rename the PHP file to a PHTML file extension. Now, we will upload this file and see whether it is uploaded successfully or not. Let's try to access the file to see if PHP code execution is possible on the server. Look at that. Our PHP code ran on the server successfully. Similar to the previous level, level 3 is also the same, where developers add a blacklist for the PHP file extension and its other variants but forgot to do something to blacklist. Let's try to upload the previous file extension to see if this file uploaded successfully or not. Let's try to access the file to see if PHP code execution is possible on the server. Look at that. Our PHP code ran on the server successfully. Let's move on to level 4. In this section, if we try to upload our previous file, we receive the following error, which means, we can only upload the .gif file extension. Let's try to upload this file after changing its file extension to GIF. Now, let's try to upload it again. As you can notice, the upload was successful. Let's try to open this link. The upload was successful, but the uploaded file not running as a PHP file, as the file acts as a GIF file. We can bypass this check by simply changing the MIME type through an intercepting proxy. Launch Burp Suite from the application menu. Tap on the proxy tab and turn on intercepting mode. Now, go back to the Firefox browser and change the proxy setting to Burp Suite using the Foxy Proxy extension. Now, let's try to upload the GIF file again. Once we click on the Upload button, we will automatically intercept HTTP headers. Here, we will have to change the file name to .php extension. If you have noticed, the MIME type is an image and the subtype is a GIF. Once we forward the headers, we will receive a successful upload message. Once the upload was successful, let me open the uploaded link in another window. Look at that! Our PHP code ran on the server successfully. Similar to the previous, if we try to upload the .php file, then we have to modify the content type to image and subtype to GIF. Here change the content type to image and the subtype to GIF. As you can notice, we have received the successful upload message. Now, let me open the uploaded link in another window. Let's move on to the level 5 section. In this section, if we try to upload the .php file, we will receive failed upload message. Let's try to upload it again after changing the content type. But similar to the previous, we will receive similar problems. Let's try to upload the .gif file after renaming the PHP file. Let's try again by uploading the GIF file. As you can see, we have received a successful upload message. Now, let me open the uploaded link in another window. Since, the uploaded file is in form of image format, which means it can't run as a PHP file.
similar to the previous level, if we try to change the file format name to PHP, we will receive a similar message. There are two ways in which we can trick Apache to execute a file with a safe extension as PHP. To trick the Apache server, we will have to upload the .ht access file using set handler method. Open a text editor and type the following code. Now save it as .ht access. Remember to save this file in a fresh directory where there will be no hidden files and directories. Now, we will have to upload the .ht access file, which tricks Apache to execute any file containing .gif as a valid PHP file by forcing through the set handler directive. Now, upload the file with have.gif extension. Once it is uploaded, we will have to open the file. As you can notice, this safe.gif file gets executed as a valid PHP file. Using the add type method. Similar to the set handler method, here, we instead map a new file extension, such as lol, which gets executed as a PHP file. To achieve this, we upload the following as the .ht access file. Then we upload a file with .lol as the file extension, say phpinfo.lol, and then access the file from a browser. Observe the file extension in the URL, its.lol, which gets mapped to PHP and is executed accordingly. Let's move on to the level 6 section. Here, if we try to upload any file which contains PHP and HTML codes can easily be detected. Let me rename it to .gif file, and then try to upload it again. In this section, there's a function, called the getImageSize function, which basically reads a file, and returns the size of the image, if a correct image file is provided. In case an invalid file is thrown, then the getImageSize function silently fails. The property of this function is used to verify if the file is an image or not. However, there are techniques that can effectively lead to the bypass of this protection. We can easily bypass such checks by adding the magic code of the same file extension. You can find out the proper magic code by searching on Google. Paste this magic code within the PHP file. Now, the file should get uploaded without any problems. As you can see, the uploaded file is valid, and was successfully uploaded. But, we will have to modify the file name to .php through burp suite. Now, once again upload the file. Now change the file name to .php file, and click on forward. Now, we shall go ahead and access the file. Look at that! Our valid GIF file containing our PHP script was uploaded successfully and was executed as expected. So, here, we successfully defeated the getImageSize function and uploaded our payload. Let's move on to the level 7 section. Here, in this section, if we try to upload any file, then we will not receive any link on which the file is uploaded. But, we can find out the file location using cross site scripting file upload vulnerability. Save this file with cross-site scripting code. Now, upload it. Once we upload this file, we will prompt us with the domain name. To find out the path location of any uploaded file, rename the self-created file to the following XSS code.
The file is uploaded within this same directory. Let me change this PHP file name to the PHP info file. As expected, we have successfully accessed the PHP file. How to prevent file upload vulnerabilities? To prevent file upload vulnerabilities, it is important to properly validate the file type, size, and content of any file that is uploaded to the server. This can help to ensure that only safe files are allowed to be uploaded and executed on the server. If you have any doubts or queries related to this video, then mention them in my comment section.